Well, hi, thanks for joining me here. We're going to take a romp through the schematic for this radio. And uh, listen, I'm not doing this cold. I've just spent the last you know, easily an hour studying the schematic, and uh, I, I still don't have it 100%. I'll never have it 100%. But there are some pretty interesting things in this really simple radio. So we're going to spend a fair bit of time looking at the schematic and just going through it. And then um, we'll look at some of the radio uh, stuff that we've stumbled on in the schematic. And we'll actually look at the radio itself and see what's up. So uh, first thing, I was mystified by this guy uh, the last time I looked at this schematic. Well, that is supposed to be the power plug on the back of the radio that you plug the power cord into. So that makes things really quite simple here. There's the on-off switch. And the dotted line shows it's gained with the volume control. Now that happens to be the case. If we just uh, take a quick peek at the uh, radio here, this is the volume control. Now, admittedly, it doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel quite right. So that's that's why it has this extra on-off switch to compensate for the broken one on the volume control. So now. One of the things we want to know is, is this a hot chassis radio or or not? So if we just trace, let's say, we'll trace this side of the power line through here. Okay, now, first thing we do is we encounter the two. Okay, let me tell you, I was off track for 15 minutes looking at this until I realized that what's shown inside the tube diagram does not relate in any way to where the wires are positioned on the outside contrary to how most schematics are done. This one is done with the standard image inside. If you look up at these ones, you'll see cathode plate. They're actually tipped in the direction of the signal that progress through the radio. So it's kind of neat in a way that they're tipped that way. But these connections here actually match the pin numbers and the pin positions. And a little key there represents the base of the two. Right, the, uh, the key on the base of the tube here. So you can actually look at this diagram, like that, look at the back of the radio, figure out where the key is. And then these wires will be just as they're shown here pictorially. But the confusing thing is, just because this wire here, this, this lead right here, comes close to the plate, it probably has nothing to do with the plate. Now, if the picture was better, maybe it's all drawn inside there, but but uh, this image I'm working from isn't. So I got totally fooled by this. I went nuts trying to sort out what's going on here. So uh, anyway, let's continue along. You just have to trust me that this is a heater lead and this is the other heater lead. So we're coming along, come in, we go through the heater, out this way, come along, come along, come along. And if we encounter all the rest of the heaters. And then if we follow this, back, 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 back. It's a straight piece of wire right back to the other side of the power plug. So that's how you get the heaters all lined up in series uh, through here. Now, the actual B plus output of this is coming through here, through this resistor, and along here. Right away you can see, oh, there's the big capacitors right here. Okay, and Here's a resistor. This is a, like a 33 ohm resistor, and its its job is to make sure that this tube doesn't get beat up when it first starts conducting current by this capacitor, which pretty much looks like a short circuit at first. So if we didn't have this resistor, the, the demand on this tube would just be suddenly too high. Um, so that slows it slows down the charge flow into this capacitor. This resistor is much bigger, and it. it also slows down the charge flow, but that's not really why it's there. It's part of the filter network here to try to reduce the hum. So at this point, you've reduced the hum down to, I don't know what, there's probably a B plus of 150 volts here or something like that. Not exactly sure. And the hum would be maybe a percent of that. I'm not sure. But we can go further, go through this resistor. This is quite a big guy. And then there's another large filter capacitor here. At this point, the B plus is very, very clean. There's going to be no hum. The hum's going to be 0.0001% or something like that. But the voltage here would be much lower because 
this resistor is going to drop due to current flow in this line quite a bit. And in fact, it says right there, 70 volts. So, you know, 140, 150 here, 70 volts there. Well, that's perfect for the radio. I mean, this didn't happen by accident. This is exactly how this has been planned. And all radios are very similar to this. So earlier in the power supply, this lead is taken out. This is the higher, higher voltage one. And where is it going? Well, it's going through the output transformer to the plate of the output tube. So you want the high voltage here. You want this is the hard working tube. This is the working tube. Um, yeah, the rectifier tube works hard too, but this is the one that's doing the work you want. It's producing the drive for the speaker. So it needs the highest voltage you can get to it, and it's going to draw a fair bit of current uh, while it's doing its job. That's what the current is really. That's where you want the current to be spent. You want the power to be spent making the speaker go. That's what you listen to. So, so you pull it out earlier in the power supply. It, it, that current flow doesn't go through here. Once again, kind of leaving this part isolated away. Now this is a really high impedance line. This guy, more or less, not a lot of current flow in it. So this big capacitor can really hold the voltage steady here especially with this resistor isolating it away from this one which is going to be it's going to have a little bit of the audio signal kind of on it from the varying demand coming from up here so nice clean now what do you do with that nice clean b plus okay so the clean b plus goes into the sensitive part of the radio powers the audio uh, pre-amplifier or the first audio amplifier you want that nice clean b plus sitting here because any hum here is only going to get louder at this point and you also use it to supply uh, screen voltages. Uh, I can see. Okay. Maybe we'll bump into that later. That's probably the screen right there. And then this is probably no. Don't say it. Yeah, this is actually B minus right here. So a lot of these radios, uh, you should get curious right off the bat. Uh, what about the chassis? What is going on with the chassis? The, just the metal chassis of the radio anyway. Um, it's treated in some way. The chassis is a problem from many angles. Uh, lots of angles. Safety being one of them. Another one is as a source of interference. So for instance, if you want to be safe with the chassis, maybe you don't want to connect it to anything. Nothing absolutely no connection whatsoever the chassis is a metal box and everything's mounted on it but nothing is touching it electrically unfortunately the metal box is an antenna it's a lousy antenna but it's an antenna and it's going to have signals in it it's going to have 60 cycle hums in it and it's even going to transport signals within the radio perhaps that might be generated here and there uh, it's going to present lots of problems so you can't just leave it floating out there Okay, so why don't we just connect it to, let's say, ground. Whoops, ground, as in the green wire from the power company. That's usually pretty safe, isn't it? Well, that's not available because this is a two-prong plug, non-polarized in these old radios. You can plug it in left or right. Either way, it's not polarized and no third prong. So you don't even know which one of these two wires is actually the live one coming in from the power company, let alone which one to hook the chassis up to. And if you figured it out and somebody just reversed the plug when they plugged it in, whatever you figured out would be the other way around. You'd be in trouble again if you hooked up the chassis straight to the wire. So how do they actually do it? Okay, so if we come back, we get uh, this wire here. This is the B minus. This is connected directly to, to here. Come on, come on. Finally, when we get here, if we look down, there's a capacitor, and below it is the chassis connection symbol. Which you see here, here. Here, there are a few connections to the chassis. Hmm, that's interesting. Here's another one here. Wow, this will get more interesting in a moment. So what's going on here is that is the connection from the B minus line to the chassis, but it's through a capacitor. This is a 0.03, I think, it's a moderately a medium-sized capacitor. I guess you could call it. 
So what's the story there? Um, okay, uh, again, read up on the internet. There's lots to know about this capacitor and its brother. There's usually a resistor across it, like a big one, but it's not on this radio. Uh, what's this guy doing? Uh, mostly, he's draining away any uh, RF signals that are in the metal chassis, and draining them into here. You can look at it that way. Or another, and this is the negative negative bus, if you like. Or another way of looking at it is at radio frequency, because this appears like a short circuit at radio frequency. Uh, any signals in the chassis are also on here. This is a bad way of saying it. So there's no difference between this wire anyway and the chassis. If there's a difference, then you can get some kind of signal developing in the radio. But if you basically short them together, which they would be at RF with this capacitor, then there can't be any difference and no potential difference and no 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 signal. You'll quiet quiet down the noisy chassis, kind of like that, or make the radio insensitive to what's going on. I guess there's all kinds of ways of talking about it. But but oh my God, what about the shock hazard? Because now the chassis through the capacitor is connected to this wire that's connected to this wire that you don't know which way this thing's plugged in and sometimes it would be 120 volts so you know grab your radio chassis and grab your refrigerator door and uh, what's going to happen actually here's the chassis grab the chassis well probably you're going to feel something to be honest with you you're going to feel a, a trickle a trickle shock uh, I get a few of those in my own shop with some unfortunate regularity uh, because of one piece of equipment I haven't uh, done a little bit more about yet. But it's a trickly shock. Uh, it's enough to make you jump, that's for sure. Maybe they're going to drop your drink at the fridge or something like that. So, But you won't get killed. Make this a solid wire. And the whole situation is extremely dangerous. Now this radio has a phono plug. So people will have their hands at the back of this radio. They will be clumsily trying to shove in the phono plug back here. Let me, let me just show it to you. It's right here. Right? So you're gonna this so this has to be exposed enough that you can get your phono plug. Ah, I can't get one in my hand right away, but anyway you know what I'm talking about. You're gonna plug it in, your fingers are gonna be all over here. So so one thing's for sure. You want that capacitor to be good. Okay, now let's talk about. Uh, let's stay away from the light here. <laughs> okay, why don't you just follow the signal through the radio once? We'll see how it goes. So, so here's the antenna. The way they're showing it here is uh, there's the coil. Very obviously, that's the coil. There's a tap off of it coming here, and the tap is connected to the chassis. Okay, so this, I'm going to see the dotted line here. The dotted line is showing you that these two capacitors are ganged together. That's actually the tuning capacitors. They don't come right out and say it on the schematic. And these are the trimmer here, and a much more complicated set of trimmers in here. This is the controlling the local oscillator that you're going to use for tuning the radio. And this is the antenna in front end allowing in uh, whatever's coming in on this antenna to make it to the first first two. Now, this is a tuned circuit. The antenna and the capacitor, they form a tuned circuit. So the mouth on this radio isn't wide, wide open, but it's pretty wide open. A better radio would have another tube in here. More tuned circuits before you get to the mixer. But, you know, this is an inexpensive tabletop radio meant to pick up powerful nearby AM stations that somebody would listen to every day all the time to hear the local news, that kind of thing. So they're not looking for an expensive radio here. You know, they're going to put in another tube there. So the mouth is open on this radio. This won't be so good. In today's environment, there's not only some radio stations, there's a whole pile of noise out here. Much of it much stronger than the radio stations you're trying to pick up so it's not a friendly world for this kind of 5 tube radio anymore those days have gone by so the signal comes in far be it for me to point out that, 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 that where it goes exactly but it gets from here to the first grid maybe the third grid depends how they 
how they are bringing up the oscillator signal, which is coming up, whoop, coming up here, and also going in the tube. The two of them mix in here. There's a non-linear deal going on in this tube. Causes harmonics. They come firing out here. The one of them is uh, if you have this tuned just right, the local oscillator just right against the station you want to pick up, you will produce a 455 signal, which will be snapped up by this tuned coil. Everything else tossed away in the wind to be forgotten about. And that one 455 signal starts working its way through the rest of the radio. Yeah, so that dotted line is just the metal can. See, it's grounded. That's pretty normal. Let's just skip ahead to the next metal can. What's going on here? What have they done? Read the note. Ice can. Oh, IF can. Isolated from chassis. Really? An IF can isolated from the chassis. So if we look at the radio. This is a little bit surprising to me. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this before. There it is. It's isolated. So this one is right on the, the metal chassis. This one's isolated. And if you look underneath the radio, even the screws that are holding it in don't touch the chassis. So this can, well, it's not it's not in direct contact with uh, with the chassis, not like I would have imagined, not like the other one. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a second. Just leave that curious part hanging open there. So where are we here? So the signal, okay, it's coming through here. I'm going to point this way. Coming through here and through the grid and the plate and then around through the plate and then coming through here. And now it's on its way to the detector. So what the detector is going to do is it's going to rectify the uh, uh, signal at this point. And the result is going to come down here and the RF portion is going to be dumped down there. The DC portion is going to be split between this resistor and this is the actual volume control resistor. The split between them, the division if you like, is going to come out here and here and here. There's some DC voltage now coming out of here that's been rectified by this tube. The stronger the signal, bigger this voltage, more stuff to rectify. Go through this. So, okay, can't go up here. Uh, capacitor is in the way. DC has got to go up here, whoosh, into the grid, or onto the grid. Let's put it that way, onto the grid of this tube. And likewise down here, whoosh, whoosh, onto the one of the grids of this tube, the, probably the signal grid that's coming from the, from the antenna. So what's that? That's the AVC. That's the A automatic volume control happening there. Okay, automatic volume control capacitor is this guy right here. He controls how fast this voltage will go up and down. Okay, so now also the audio is coming down here. It's picked off the volume control by the sliding thing. There's a capacitor right there to stop any DC that's in here, from making it into the volume control, where you'll get a permanently scratchy volume control. This is then shot up back into the detector tube, but really this is a two-part tube, so it's really like having a second tube, up onto the grid of the triode, out of the triode here, so output peeled off there, and shot into the grid somehow, I don't know how, some way, this must be the grid up here. I don't know, I, I missed something, maybe I missed something up. Yeah, maybe I did. This is probably the plate coming out here. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making sense? I think I am. Even if I'm not, it's something like this anyway. Out it comes and it gets onto the grid of this tube and then out through the output transformer, out to the speaker. I mean, if we need to know if there's any part of this that becomes significant in repair of the radio, then we dig in a little deeper and try to figure out what's really, really going on. So. So that's kind of the story here. Um, the next stage with this radio is to tune these guys here. 
and then to tune these trimmers afterwards. And we'll see what kind of sensitivity we've gotten out of the, out of the radio at that point. So, uh, now there was something else I was really curious about this radio. Oh yeah, that's right, this part. I never finished this. So here we have, let's finish with this. Here we have the isolated can. And it's connected, it's connected to this wire and that comes over here to this pin on this tube. Sailing over to here. Pin one on this tube. And then through a resistor to here, through a capacitor down to the AVC line. I have no idea why it, it, it is exactly like this, but I'll show you my observations anyway. It continues over here and connects to the same thing, pin 1. So, pin 1 on these uh, tubes, metal tubes, pin 1 right there. Pin 1 is actually connected to the metal can here. Now this bottom plate is not metal plug the tube in, it doesn't necessarily contact the chassis. In fact, it won't contact the chassis. But you can get a wire on the can through the pin, through pin 1. So what they've done in this radio is they've wired together the pin 1s for this tube, this tube, and guess what? This tube. And this can. And then they've taken that wire and resistored it to, uh, I think it's the B-. minus. I got that right and they've used a capacitor to stick it back to the AVC line. I haven't got a clue why they would do that. Why would you ever want to do that? I don't know, but no doubt lots of experimentation in their shop when they were designing these things and they found that these kinds of arrangements result in superior operation or less components, less cost, something going on like that. Now likewise this uh, capacitor is covered in uh, cardboard uh, is also isolated from the chassis and uh, it's covered in cardboard so you can't contact the uh, shell of it because potentially the shell is the B minus line and the B minus line is all about which way you plug this in whether it's, whether it's safe to touch or not so I think I think that might be it for talking about the radio I think we're all ready to do the alignment on it and uh, see, see if we can get it working reasonably well. Hey, thanks so much for watching to this point. Oh, before we do an alignment and uh, what actually got me looking at the schematic in the first place is the uh, blocking capacitor for the grid of the output tube which is well worth uh, checking up on. And so uh, after studying this at some length see here B plus coming up from here reaching the plate of this tube so this is where the output is there's a load resistor plate resistor out comes the output through this capacitor here and up to the grid of this tube this capacitor here C23 so now when we look in the radio So this is the uh, output tube here, rectifier here, and uh, pin number pin number five is the grid. So if I count them here, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and there's the capacitor right there. So that capacitor is the blocking capacitor connecting to B plus. I think it's using a spare pin on this tube just to confuse everything. Okay, and then the uh, cathode, which is really where we want to measure to. We're going to measure the bias on this grid. I'm going to measure to the cathode. Here's the cathode here. And this is what caught my eye just a moment ago. I saw this earlier and thought, well, it looks like somebody's gone in and replaced the, the uh, cathode bypass capacitor. 
And it looks like a nice size, so I didn't think much of it. But I look more closely at it. It actually says 2,700 picofarads. Uh, then it says 3.6. I don't know what that is. Plus or minus 10% 400 volt. 2,700 picofarads, that's tiny. Um, this isn't going to do anything. Unless it's doing something else. I'm, unless I'm mistaken, this is actually... Yeah, yeah, careful, Jimmy. You're probably making a mistake. It's connected to the cathode. Where does it go? Well, I don't know. I'll investigate that in a moment. What I'm really after is just to measure the grid voltage here at relative to the cathode and see what we got. Um, if that capacitor is leaky at all, then we get a little bit of positive voltage there and we're in a fair bit of trouble. Yeah, the tube will start to conduct more than it should. Tube overheats, uh, output transformer overheats, uh, everything overheats, power supply overheats. Just a question of who's going to bite it first, really, at that point. So we don't want that to happen. My meter out. Best to use a totally ungrounded meter to do this because I'm going to have the leads in a couple of places in here. Um, it's not absolutely necessary if you're careful, but I don't plan on being careful. So uh, I should be about, should be under 20 volts. That's what I would. Yes. Look in the book and see what it should be. Why don't we do that? What does the book say? The book says typical operation grid number one control grid voltage minus seven, minus seven volts, seven and a half volts. So that's kind of what we expect to see here. Now let's set to go. Let's see, the volume is down. Pretty sure the switch is on. There we go. The light came on. Dulled down a little bit. That's good. Should brighten up. There it comes. Oh, up, down, up, down. Should brighten up more. There it comes. There we are. So that's the current flowing through the uh, tubes. Now let's take a look at that voltage. Get to get a to see a negative reading. I should put my negative lead there, my positive lead there. Minus 5.4. So there's no problem here at all. Now you might say, oh, well, let it run for a long time and, and maybe the current will leak up into it. Uh, maybe. I don't think so. These capacitors actually don't look very bad, these uh, paper capacitors, except for maybe this one here. And I think that's carrying the audio signal. Okay. Uh, did I turn, to turn it off to tip it down? I think I'm okay. Wow, okay, so, <laughs> right, this maybe isn't the smartest move on this particular radio. I'll tell you why. Handling the radio with it on. I know how the chassis is connected. The chassis is connected via that capacitor to the negative lead. Now, I have an isolated shop here, so I really don't have this concern, but I like to continue to work as if I do have this concern that I might get a shock off the uh, chassis. Um, where I can get a shock though, I, I think, it could be a voltage difference between the chassis and the frame of the capacitor. And maybe, maybe this isolated can. Hey, why don't we just look for that? Just to see what the heck is going on. Oh, I don't need to pick that up. Leave it there. First we'll look, with, uh, look for uh, DC. Is there any DC? I'm a little stunned if we actually find something here. No, because 
we saw that this thing was grounded through a resistor and all that kind of stuff. But I have in the past, and this is also grounded to the chassis, I have in the past gotten quite a lift off a radio just in this kind of a thing happening. Well, everything looks okay to me. I don't see that anything funny is going on here. safe than sorry though you know I've been surprised so many times by stuff Gadoke. so alignment time I'm gonna leave the radio on for a little bit in fact I gotta give it full power let's turn it up a little bit So I gotta stop and set up the alignment equipment. Duh, how did I set it up? Duh.